This video is about motion in a straight line. It's an application of rates of change. Uh, now, I've just copy and pasted a lot of stuff out of your textbook here, so I'm not going to read all of that, but I am going to talk you through it. Um, all right, so first of all, we can talk about something called position. Uh, so when we talk about motion in a straight line, the easiest way to think about it is uh, put yourself on the starting line of a 100 meter track. Starting line of the 100 meter track. And this point here is the position of the runner. So maybe they've, they're, they're here uh, at the 20 meter mark. So that's the position of our runner. Um, now it might have taken some amount of time to get there, but I'm only interested in position at the moment. All right, the X. The X represents two things at the moment. It represents both displacement and it also represents distance traveled. All right, so it's important to note that displacement and distance are two different things. So we need to come up with a definition for displacement and a definition for distance. And the best way to do it is to look at this um, example here. So what this looks like is our runner started, I'll just use this here, started at the origin and then ran five meters forward and then changed their mind and started running backwards and now they're back behind the starting line by two meters. Now, the displacement of this person is negative two units. The distance that they traveled is 12 units. Okay, so uh, let's come up with some nice little pithy ways to remember that. A formal proofs, but they'll do us. Uh, the displacement is the difference between the origin and the object. So you can see it's only negative two here. The distance is the total amount traveled. All right, so two related but slightly different ideas. On effects when we're talking about velocity and speed. So if we look at uh, average velocity, so the average velocity is the change in position over the change in time. So if I was to look at this question here, the change in position, well, they ran there, they went there, but the total change in position is only like negative two. And the total change in time, well, I, I've got to give you a number here. I'll tell you that it took them, um, four seconds to get from there there to there so change position change in time so that means that they're traveling at a velocity an average velocity of uh, negative 0 0.5 uh, and we'll call it meters per second let's say all right so that's average velocity but let's look at this person again but let's talk about average speed this time so the average speed of this person is the total distance that they traveled well they traveled five units and then seven more units so they traveled 12 units in total uh, and then the total time it took it took four seconds so this speed was three meters per second all right so this was average speed average speed and this was average velocity and that's really the difference between both velocity and speed. And in this one, we used um, displacement, while in this one, we used distance. Average speeds and average velocities. But if you wanted to know an instantaneous velocity, you would need to use a derivative. So uh, the velocity, the velocity of an object is equal to the derivative of displacement with respect to time. So if we have a function for uh, displacement, we can find the derivative of that, and that'll give us the, the function that tells us the instantaneous rate of change, the velocity at any given moment. Let me do an example here. Uh, a particle moves in a straight line so that its position, x, is relative to origin at time t seconds. It's given by this function here. I'm going to type that into uh, GeoGebra and get a feel for what it looks like. All right, so there's the graph of it. Uh, now I'm going to consider it as like a straight line motion. So I'm going to put it on a 100 meter track. Um, now, here's the start of the 100 meter track. And at time zero, our runner, well, let's put our 100 meter track here. Okay, at time zero, our friend is six meters away from the start line. So they've been given some sort of head start. And then the gun goes and from time zero to time one, 
they start running backwards. They run back towards the start line. And you can see at time zero, they've traveled six meters backwards. Oh, sorry, at time one. Now, then they they blow straight past the, start, the finish line and they keep running and running and running and running and running until they get like six and a bit meters back. Right? And then that looks like that happens until about 3.5 seconds in, at which point they decide, oh, that's a bit silly. And then they turn around and start running backwards again. That's right, start running forwards again. Now, at the six second mark, they're at position zero again, and then they keep running forwards for what looks like forever and ever and ever. So that's what our drawing looks like. Someone starting with a head start, running backwards, going past the start line, then coming back. Right. Uh, I just feel like we should spend some time thinking about what these questions are, what's happening when we do them. Right. Find its initial velocity. If we're trying to find velocities, in, uh, if we're trying to find an initial velocity, a velocity at a particular moment, a derivative is going to help us out. So the derivative of x with respect to t is equal to 2t minus 7. And we want to know, uh, let t equal 0. Uh, so 2 times 0 minus 7. Its initial velocity is negative 7. Uh, do they give us meters, centimeters, and seconds? Negative 7 centimeters per second. So I wrote meters there, but really it should be centimeters and seconds. All right, so that was part A. When does its velocity equal zero? All right, so the velocity is given by this function. This is the velocity function here. So I want to know when does that equal zero? So zero, oops, zero equals 2t minus 7. t equals... Um, 7 over 2, t equals 3.5. And we knew that already, or we had a rough idea of that, because we looked at our graph, and you can see there's a turning point there. That's the person running backwards, slowing down, slowing down, stopping, and coming back the other way. It has a velocity of 0 at that uh, turning point. Okay, what is its average velocity? What is its average velocity for the first 4 seconds? Okay. Um, this is where people get a little bit tricked up. So they started off here at six and then moved to here at time four. So I'm gonna draw a line between those two points. And essentially I'm doing y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Uh, but I need to know exactly what those points are. So I'm gonna do, um, this is this is the function x of t. So I'm going to do um, average velocity equals x of 0 minus, oh, let's do the other v. I think that'll just give us a better answer. x of 4 minus x of 0. So this is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, which is 4 minus 0. All right, that's easy, four. Now, if I sub four into my original equation, uh, I'll get four squared minus seven times four plus six, and that's um, negative six. And then x of zero, if I put zero in for t squared minus seven t plus six, I'll get six minus six. So now I have negative six minus six over four, I have negative 12 over four, uh, that's negative 3 centimetres per second. Uh, so velocity has a sign there. He's moving backwards pretty much for the whole time. He turns around just before the four-second mark, but that's his average velocity. Now, his average speed, uh, that's trickier. Uh, that's a really tricky one. Average speed equals total distance traveled over time and this is why i spent so long at the start drawing pictures right uh, because they started here they started here they ran backwards 
And in the first second, they traveled six meters. And then they kept running backwards, and then they traveled six meters. And then they sort of uh, traveled a bit further, right? Um, so six, six, and then a little bit. Um, let's see. Uh, we know that x of 4 was negative 6. One thing I don't know is exactly how far he travelled before he turned around again. I don't know that that turning point moment. Um, so if I sub 3.5 in to um, the original function, I'll know what that turning point is. So I'm just going to do that. All right, that turning point there is... Um, negative 6.25 at um, time 3.5. So what does that mean? They traveled 6 meters backwards, negative 6.25 meters backwards, and then 0.25 meters forwards. So that's a total distance traveled of 6 plus 6.25 plus 0.25 all over total time of 4 seconds. Um, that's going to be something. That's our 3... 0.125 meters per, ah, uh, sorry, centimeters per second. Average speed is a real pain. I'm probably a little bit tired. Do a few questions and we'll come back and we'll talk about acceleration.